guys, I hope you guys had a good Tuesday. Today we're going to be looking at another snowstorm that could be impacting parts of the upper Midwest and uh, also parts of the Northwest and Great Lakes. And then it's going to move into southeastern Canada, uh, and that could drop about 1 to 3 inches. Some isolated spots seeing about 5 to 8 inches of snowfall from that. And then we're going to be uh, looking at another coastal storm, but this one doesn't look to have as much snow, uh, doesn't look to have uh, at, uh, any snow, um, prob maybe some snow sleet on the northern side but we lo it looks to kind of just veer off to sea according to the gfs and the U european model showing a lot of rainfall uh because it has it closer to the coast so we're going to be kind of uh breaking that storm down and uh showing what the two different models are showing the european and the gfs before we do get into it though please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when we upload now here's the national weather service and we have a winter weather advisory over Montana, and that's because of that next clipper system that's going to be moving through, and it's going to be kind of moving through and then tracking up north like that. Then we have a winter weather advisory over parts of the UP of Michigan, and uh, that's mainly because of lake effect snowfall, if you were wondering. And then we have some snow squall warnings, and that's where you could have some heavy snowfall uh, for about 30 or so minutes uh, of snowfall about three, four inches of an hour uh, of snowfall. So very heavy uh, snowfall rates, and that's going to be reducing visibility. That's why you have a snow squall warning over parts of northern Michigan. Then we have some air quality alerts and air stagnation advisories over Oregon and Idaho, and then even a little bit of Washington. And then we have some uh, coastal flood advisories over uh, uh, coastal flood watches over parts of coastal Oregon. Then we have some high wind warning uh, in that little corner of Wyoming where you could have some pretty gusty winds, some winds gusting up to 40, 50 miles per hour, some exceeding that. Then f uh, red flag warnings, uh, some drier conditions today leading to that in parts of Nebraska, uh, Kansas, and then also parts of Colorado. Then we have over the east, pretty active, we have some freeze watch, uh, warnings in effect where you have the greatest chance of seeing your first freeze. Uh, you only get one of these every year, uh, so uh, it's usually the end of the growing season, uh, especially when you get that freeze warning. Freeze watches, a little bit more unlikely, still uh, could happen tonight over southeast Georgia. Then we have some uh, hard freeze warnings over parts of Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas. And then over over parts of the eastern U United States, uh, over the Appalachians, and then stretching into the interior northeast and Great Lakes, uh, especially for the Great Lakes, that's going to be uh, due to some lake effect. But over Maine, that those winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings, still because of that system, uh, which actually dropped a couple of, uh, well, not really inches of snowfall over the coastal northeast. We had uh, some flakes over those areas, but for the interior northeast, you guys got hammered with about six, seven, uh, eight inches, some areas receiving more than that, and even some snowfall records over uh, the Ohio Valley. Uh, I believe Indianapolis, you guys had about 2.8 inches, I believe that that was a statistic, uh, and I'm pretty sure that was a record for you guys uh, for November at least. And now we're going to be talking about this clipper system, this next snow, snow threat. And we're going to look at the European and the GFS. So uh, this is our system kind of departing. Uh, and uh, you see, it's this is what we're really looking at here, uh, this clipper system. That's going to be coming out of British Columbia uh, and Alberta, Canada. And it's going to be making its way through into parts of the Great Lakes and then out into parts of southeastern Canada, Quebec, uh, Ontario, uh and th all those areas, uh, and even parts of Nova Scotia, uh, some of those a uh, areas in Southeast Canada could be affected with this, uh, with either rain or snowfall. We'll have to see. Uh, but we're only a couple, of, only about three days out from the system, so we have a pretty good grasp on what's going to happen. So this would be for tonight, and you're seeing it move into parts of North Dakota, Min northern Minnesota, and then Montana. 
and it's going to make its way down. See, for parts of Nebraska and South Dakota, staying as rainfall of the north, uh, the northern and eastern side of that in South Dakota could uh, switch over to rainfall, uh, to snowfall. And then you see it's pretty much a classic Clipper system: moderate, uh, light to moderate snowfall. A uh, couple of band uh, bands where you could have some moderate snowfall. Definitely nothing really going to uh, create some travel. Uh, it's going to disrupt travel or anything. Uh, the grass, the grass and the grounds are uh, cold enough to support some snowfall uh, staying and accumulating on those surfaces, uh, potentially not roadways, uh, but some areas seeing a few inches could definitely pick it up on roadways, but nothing really going to cause travel concerns. The only travel concern I could think of it really is those wet roadways, especially when the snow melts, uh, definitely could cause some slippery roads. So just thought uh, stay a little bit uh, behind the car in front of you uh, to just make sure you don't uh, you know bump into them because it does take a little bit longer to stop on those wet roadways anyways moving on Thursday mornings over uh, parts of Michigan and the Great Lakes and then it's starting to depart by Thursday night so Here's your snowfall total. So the these areas really are well, pretty much these areas are gonna uh, be due to that uh, snow event that's currently ongoing. But really, if you're in this uh, area, this is where you're getting it from this clipper system. So generally, about a coating to an inch in those darker grays, and then once you get to those blues, that's about two to about five or six inches, and then six plus uh, a narrow band from about uh, Marquette, Michigan, uh, in the UP of Michigan, uh, and then th uh, part in through parts of western Michigan. So we'll have to see exactly where that band fe feature sets up, but uh, those areas are right around there could be seeing about four to five inches, but generally about a coating from this system. Now, here's what we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to kind of look at zoomed in. So here's from this system. Pretty much all of this is from this system. So some higher elevations seeing snowfall, uh, even some are l lower elevations. All these areas are uh, highly elevated, especially in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. They're all about 600, 700 uh, feet elevated, even on the lowest areas. But uh, the higher elevations, the mountain tops could pick up about one to three inches. Now, as you move on to the northern plains, you see generally a coating, a dusting. And then once you move over to the northeast, uh, again, most of this is not uh, for the northeast, at, at least, is not uh, from uh, this clipper. Anywhere that's not in this area, that's to the north and west of this uh, highlighted pink area, is probably from this system. So you see, some of this is also lake enhanced for Michigan and areas like that, but generally about one to four inches. Potentially, some areas seeing about half a foot of snow. Now, here's the GFS model, and it's going to depart again from the north. So we have a pretty good grasp on this system. Uh, but generally, where they where they kind of uh, don't agree is generally when they're splitting up. Uh, the GFS kind of has it a bit north, and the European has it slightly s uh, more south. But generally, not going to make too much of a difference. All those areas will probably see snowfall anyway. And now as we move into uh, Thursday morning, uh, some lake effect snow mixed in with that clipper system over parts of the Great Lakes. And then it departs by Thursday morning uh, and Thursday evening. Some scattered snow showers over the northeast, especially for uh, northern New England and upstate New York. And then uh, we, uh, we're we going to talk about this right here uh, in just a little bit. But here's your snowfall totals. So this is for the wide view of the entire United States. Now we're going to go from the northwest then to the midwest and then the northeast. You see, uh, the GFS has a bit more snowfall for these areas. And you see, we have about three, four, five, six inches in some uh, cases over the higher elevations. But generally, a scattered coating to an inch, very sporadic over these areas. Then it gets a bit more defined, uh, defined as we get over to the Midwest and Great Lakes. You see generally one to three inches, four inches in some areas. And then this is where you're really seeing that half a foot uh, right to the east of Marquette, Michigan, uh, and the UP of Michigan. And then even into the western and northern parts of Michigan, seeing about six inches, four inches, three inches. So a lot a lot of snowfall especially for november uh this is going to be occurring before uh, around the 13th to the 15th of november now here's the northeast again pretty much th uh these areas are going to be th to the north and west of these these areas are going to be from this system so you see generally a one to three inches a one to three inch event from this clipper
Now, we're going to talk about this potential coastal storm, and we're going to look at the European and GFS model. Now, it's originating in the Gulf of Mexico, and some of this is going to, some of this moisture is coming off of the Pacific, and then some of this is coming in through uh, the southern Gulf of Mexico uh, near Central America. And then these two areas of moisture are going to kind of meet. So you see, this is your area of moisture here, and then here's your band of moisture here. And they're going to kind of come together, and then they're going to move through uh, about Florida, and uh, right through Florida, and then move their way up the coast. Now, we're going to move this on, and you see they start to kind of meet uh, by about Thursday night, Friday morning, and then you see just some scattered thunderstorms over the, over the Gulf, but some more steady uh, and organized thunderstorms and showers over parts of the southeast. Now, we're going to zoom out to the eastern, to the east coast, and you're going to see very heavy rainfall uh, over about Friday afternoon over the southeast coast, especially for North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, some sporadic thunderstorms indicated by these little cells of very uh very heavy rainfall this indicates uh an easterly flow or a westerly flow and that's going to be pushing these thunderstorms onto shore onto the florida coast now as it moves on uh, you see a really heavy band of uh rainfall develops over parts of South Carolina and North Carolina, and then it's going to move out into Virginia and the Delmarva, and you see it's a really big system. This system is spanning, I would say, a good 300 miles or so, uh, if not a little bit more, uh, and this is the width of this system, so it's a pretty wide system from uh, from end to end. Now, it's going to move up the coast by about Sunday night. Uh, you see some mixing in with some snowfall, uh, sleet over these areas. That's why I said in the beginning that we did have a threat for some icing issues over uh parts of uh, southern New England, uh, and then potentially some snowfall mixing in uh, by about Monday morning, and then Monday night, pretty much departing it's all the way out into the uh, uh, almost uh, the central uh, Atlantic uh, but still some showers going on for Nova Scotia and Maine now it's going to move out and then uh, by Saturday morning it's pretty much all said and done now here's the Here's the total uh, rainfall from this system. And you see in those greens, that's about a tenth of an inch to half an inch, half an inch to one inch in those blues, one to two in those yellows, two to five in those reds. And then once you get into those browns, it's about five to seven. Now, you're going to see we have about about uh, two to three inches, four inches, five inches, definitely not out of the question, especially where that heavier banding sets up. I'll do it in another color. It's a bit easier to see where that heavier ba banding sets up in parts of South Carolina and North Carolina. Uh, we could definitely see a bit more uh, rainfall. Now we're going to look at the GFS model because it does have a bit of a different grasp. It has it moving off to sea to the east a little bit uh, more. So this would be for Friday morning and then by Friday night, you see that low very well developed over the coast of the Carolinas. Now, it's going to kind of stall out and some thunderstorm activity is going to develop over the area, over those areas of the Carolinas, especially for southeast North Carolina. Both models have at least a three, four, five inch uh, rain event for those areas. So that's the best area to see your rainfall. Uh, so unfortunately, some flash flooding could occur with this system, but it's really going to stall out. And then by Sunday morning, it starts to depart. And then uh, really intense low pressure with those isobars, uh, these little gray lines, uh, the closer they are together, indicating uh, differences in pressure, which uh, if they are closer together, that usually means higher winds. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, the wind speeds more in a later video that we'll probably make on this uh, storm if it really looks like it's going to develop. And then by Monday, it's off to sea uh, and just some scattered showers. Now, here's the total rainfall from this uh, from the GFS. So in those greens, about a hundredth of an inch to half an inch. In those blues, about half an inch to two inches, two to six inches in those uh, purples. And then if you're in the yellow or reds, uh, which luckily no areas on land are, but off to sea, you could be seeing about six to 12, 24 inches uh, over those areas. So you see, 
we have a generally about half an inch to two inches, especially for that northeast South Carolina, south e uh, southwest or uh, southeast uh, parts of North Carolina. Uh, you could have you. I think really this area is the bullseye, as two models are indicating uh, heavy rainfall for those areas. The GFS on the lesser amount. Uh, the GFS has this bullseye really just off to off to sea the european had this bullseye just on shore so really a matter of uh just a few miles probably 50 to 100 miles is the difference between uh six inches of rain and just two inches of rain so really a big difference anyways if you did enjoy that please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when we upload anyways guys uh that was eli the weather guy and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye